Hello, Math 133 students. I've received a request for help with this question, which is 8.1.29-T. The T stands for technology, in case you're interested. Um, so it's that question in the section 8.1 homework. All right, so the amount of, oh, and I'm going to view an example, but the idea is going to be the same. The amount of time adults spend watching television is closely monitored by firms because this helps to determine advertising pricing for commercials. Complete parts A through D. All right, so part A is kind of a thinking about it question. Do you think the variable weekly time spent watching television would be normally distributed? If not, what shape would you expect the variable to have? Um, probably not normally distributed. Um, that would imply an equal number of people watch it for, you know, 40 hours a week as watch it for zero hours a week. And that's probably not the case. Um, so you can see down in the question, the real question behind us that it's going to be some type of multiple choice question. And so um, they kind of walk you through the argument here, but basically because we're cut off on the left by zero, right? It makes it so that the, the curve can't be normal like this. It's gonna have to actually be, um, well, cut off on the left by zero and cut off on the right by, well, however many hours there are in a week, right? So let me just show you what's going to happen here. Since you're locked in over on the left at zero, sorry, it's a little fuzzy, but it'll work, right? So you're locked in over on the left at zero, it's going to be more like this, right? With the number of hours per week going that way. Because even if there are several people that watch it for no time at all, there's always going to be a few people that are going to watch it for, you know, every hour of the week or have it on at least for every hour of the week, right? So that makes it skewed right. Okay, so if that's the case, then that would be the answer for that first part. So I actually um, started a Google document of this so that we could make this work. One second. There it is. All right, so we'll just say here, it's probably skewed right. I mean, we don't have the data. And um, we can say because it's cut off at zero on the left, right? So it can't really be normally distributed because we can't get, like I was saying, equal amounts on both sides, the left and the right. All right, according to a certain survey, and this is, by the way, I just copied and pasted this from the problem itself which I'd have to go grab here. But so question part B is what I just put in there. But according to a certain survey, adults spent 2.55 hours per day watching television on a weekday, assuming that the standard deviation for time spent watching television a day is 1.93 hours. If a random sample of 70 adults is obtained, describe the distribution of X bar, the mean amount of time spent watching television. So I just kind of copied and pasted that into here. Um, it didn't do a good job of making this X bar, but that's okay. There we go. I fixed that. Okay. So when they say this, describe the distribution, right? They want to know the shape, the center, and the spread. So let me highlight that real quick because we've run into that in the notes and in the course. So to describe the distribution means we want shape, center, and spread. Well, the shape is going to be really easy. The shape is going to be normal. And we would talk about why that is with the conditions, but in particular, we're interested in the fact that our sample size, little n, is 70. And 70, the last time I looked, is bigger than 30. Right? So that's why it's normal. So we got that going on. That's great. The center is the mean of the, of the X bars, right? So let me make this a little bit larger in terms of zoom inness so you can see it better. There we go. That's a little bit better. All right, so the center is the mean of the X bars. So let me give me one second while I type that in. So it's the mean of the X bars, like that, right? So it's the mean of the means, where one group of 70s X bar compares to another group of 70s X bar. I mean, that's what you're finding. All right, so, but according to our theorem, the central limit theorem on in the notes in section 8.1, we know that that's actually equal to the mean, and we know from up here that the mean is 2.55. I mean, they tell us right there. Okay, so that's the mean. Let me just highlight that in green for example. So I know that this is 2.55. Um, technically, it has the unit of hours, if you're interested. 
Uh, now the spread is what really changes. So the spread is different. The spread does not stay the same no matter what sample size you have. The spread shrinks, right? So the spread has a formula. It's sigma divided by the square root of n. Sorry, you're getting to see me type in um, the equation that are in here. All right, so sigma divided by the square root, there it is, of n. Okay, so that would mean that I want to take my sigma value, which is what this 1.93 is, right? That's the standard deviation. So that's the sigma. And I want to divide it by the square root of n, which is uh, 70. So I want to take 1.93 and I divide it by the square root of 70. And that's all well and good. That's the actual formula. Um, but we're going to need a numerical approximation. They're probably going to want like five decimal places. So I'm just going to grab decimals here and say 1.93 divided by, and to get the square root, you can use this keypad palette down here. It's the one that looks like a check mark. Or you can actually type the letters SQRT and it knows that you want a square root. And there you have it, 0.230679. So I'm going to put that in there. So it's 0 0.230679. In general, we want to keep a lot of decimal places with that spread. You don't want to round that to two. You want to round that to, you know, four, five, six decimal places. All right, so let's go back here and see. Yep, see, 0 0.230679, just like I said. All right, so next part, part C, determine the probability that a random sample of 70 adults results in a mean, see, that's an X bar, a mean watching television time between two and three hours. So it's mentioning determine the probability, which is kind of a big red flag of what you want to do with this problem. Because we have a decision matrix that we learn in chapter eight. Let me grab that real quick. There it is. I've actually augmented it with some stat crunch stuff that I'm hoping to add for future, but there you have it. Okay, so we want to know the probability. We want to find the probability. So when we're in stat crunch, we're going to put in our values, but you have to remember to use the standard deviation with at least four decimal places. In this case, I would use six because that's what they asked for. So when we go to put this into stat crunch, we're going to do that. And if you did the calculator, you would do the same thing. Now this one is particularly easy because this is a lower and an upper version. So this is going to go pretty well. Let's see here. Oop, there we go. Okay. So for this bit, first thing I want to realize is what I'm finding. So what we're finding is the probability, let me make an equation here, probability that 2 is less than or equal to x bar, right? It's a mean, it's not an x, it's x bar, which is less than or equal to 3. Technically the or equal to part doesn't really matter for us because this is a continuous distribution. All right, so let me go grab stat crunch. And of course, we go to stat, calculators, normal. And now what we really need to do is we need to put in the values that we have. So we have a mean of 2.55 and a standard deviation. Now it says standard deviation, but of course we're in this section, so we don't really want the standard deviation. What we want is the spread, which is the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of sample means, which is a lot to say, so we call it the standard error. Right, this is the standard error. Oh, I should have written it that way as well. Here, one second. This is another way to say this. The sigma sub x bar is a kind of more old fashioned way of writing this, but it's the same thing as the standard error of the x bar. That's what we're talking about. So it's 0 0.230679. 0 0.230679. I want a between probability rather than a standard. So I'm going to click between. And here I'm going to put 2, and here I'm going to put 3. Now remember why I'm doing that. Let me go back to this right here, right? Because I want to find the probability, I'm going to put my x bar numbers, 2 and 3, inside that parentheses. So they're going to go in there. And I had to click a between one because, of course, this was between 2 and 3. So I can click compute or I can click enter, and there we have it. So I can see it's 0.9659. That would be the answer right there. I know technically it's an approximation because of course we're rounding. So let me make a squiggly equals if I can find it. 
There it is. <laughs> Done. Let me really quickly run through that on the calculator, just in case you're a calculator user rather than a stat crunch user. I mean, why? But <laughs> that's fine. All right. So let's see. Second distributions. We want normal CDF. We're always using normal CDF. And then we would say 2, and then we would say 3, we would say the mean is 2.55, and you can actually type the, the, um, the equation, 1.93 divided by the square root of 70. Don't forget that division in there. For some reason, a lot of students do, so don't forget that. Um, or you can type the 0 0.230679, it'll be fine either way. So you paste it in, and there it is, same answer. Okay, so now part D, and this is the part that I think was throwing students, so let's look at it. One consequence of the popularity of the internet is that it is thought to reduce television watching. Suppose that a random sample of 50 individuals who consider themselves to be avid internet users results in a mean time of 2.20 hours watching television on a weekday. Determine the likelihood of obtaining a sample mean of 2.20 hours or less from a population mean who's presumed to be 2.55. Oh my goodness. So what I notice right off the bat is that the sample size is different right here. See that? That sample size has changed from what it was earlier. So that means that I actually have to do this whole bit again. I mean, I don't really need the normal part. I mean, we know that's to be the case, but still, you know. So it's normal because 50 is bigger than 30. I still have a mean of 2.55, but now I'm going to have a standard error of 1.93 divided by the square root of 50. So I need to find out what that is. So let me go back in here. And that's 0 0.272, 0 0.272943. That's six decimal places. That should be enough. All right, so I had to do all of that, just for starters. All right, and then they want, um, suppose a random sample of 50 individuals results in a mean time of 2.20. And then they want to determine the likelihood Ah, that's probability. So they want us to find the probability of obtaining a sample mean of 2.20 or less from a population. All right, so what they really want is the probability of 2.20 or less. So they want the probability that X bar is less than or equal to 2.20, right? Smaller than or equal to that value. All right, so yet again, <laughs> we go to StatCrunch here. Let me copy this really quickly make my life easier. Okay, so when I go to StatCrunch, I'm going to do a standard. This isn't a between one now. I want this to be 2.55, but I have to change my standard error to my new value of 2.272943, right? And then I want to be less than 2.20. I'm going to click compute, and I get 0 0.09987, right? 865. That's my result. And of course, I can show you that in the calculator as well. So just real quickly, if you go to normal CDF, you do negative 1 E 99 up to 2. You say 2.55 and 1.93 divided by the square root of 50. This is a good way to check myself, actually. I'll know whether I did it right or not. All right, so there you have it. Oh, so no, nope, something's wrong. Oh, it was 2.2, .2, not 2.2. Sorry, hold on. Let me go back and do that again. All right, so second distribution, number two. It was 2.20 right here. I forgot about that. 2.20. All right, so now I go down to paste. There we go, 0 0.099865. All right, lovely, wonderful. All right, so we found the probability, determined the likelihood. And that's kind of it, but it's not. See, the, the question asks another couple things in there. Let me, um, oh, there that is. Oops, sorry, I'm in the wrong window. I apologize. There we have it. Okay, so you're thinking, okay, wonderful. Now, here's the thing. They're actually a little bit less accurate than we are. The 0 0.1003 that they're getting is with rounding. Um, and they're doing a whole convoluted z-score method to get there, which I'm not entirely certain why since it's a technology problem. Oh, wait, except all of the all of the view and examples always do everything by hand. This is how you would do it if you were doing it by hand. Okay, so they've lost some accuracy um, is not 0 0.1003, it's 0 0.0998, which is very close to that, but it's not the same. Um, and then 
and I kind of want to show you on um, what it asks, but it, it actually asks you to interpret that probability. So we found the likelihood right here. And then um, I kind of, give me, give me one second. I'm going to paste some answers in here. One second. Okay. So it asks for an interpretation of this probability right here. So let me highlight that real quick. So I want to interpret that probability based on the idea of about a thousand samples. So this is a frequentist view of probability. In other words, well, let me just read it out. So if a thousand different samples of size n equals 50 individuals from a population whose mean is assumed to be 2.55 is obtained. Okay, so just backing up, what they're saying is suppose you do this over and over. Suppose you have that the mean really is 2.55, that's what we assume, and you're going to go get samples of 50 people over and over and over right? But you're going to do it a thousand times. So you get one group of 50 and then another group of 50 and another group of 50. We would expect a sample mean of 2.2 or, or less in about blank of the samples. And then you know, let me highlight these really quickly so you can see the important words here. And this one's 2.2 or more. And of course, the order on these, because they're multiple choice, will, will change based on, you know, randomness. So when you go to do this problem, don't be surprised if the order changes. But the key here is they're saying the same thing every time, but they're talking about um, three different inter interpretations. So one is about 2.20 or less, one is about 2.20 or more, and one is about exactly 2.20. Well, if we look back, we were talking about 2.20 hours of television or less. So it has to be the or less one. Right, just right off the bat, I can throw these two out because that's not what we were talking about, right? So they're done. <laughs> so uh, allow me to here. I don't know if you can know you can do this. Boom. <laughs> There's no way it's done, right? Now again, if your problem is different, I mean maybe your problem was or more. So watch out for that. But if your problem is or less like this one was, then it's got to be or less, right? So be careful because of course they randomize those as well. I can tell you the exactly isn't going to be a thing because we learn that continuous distributions, which the normal curve is, right? We're working with the normal curve. We said right here, the normal curve is continuous. And so the probability of an exact value is zero. We learned that in chapter seven. So that, that one's just a red herring. That's just to throw you off, right? So look at your problem and figure out if you're doing more or less. So whichever one you're doing, then it's got to be one of those, right? It's got to align with that. Okay, so then what you do is you take your probability that you found and you multiply it by a thousand. And for some reason, it's not being perfectly accurate when we do this. Um, so if you have a problem with this, by all means, forward it on to your instructor so that they can um, contact Pearson and make sure that the, sorry, I lost track of what the numbers were. So 0 0.099865. Okay, so I need to know this number, 0 0.099865. Um, and I need to multiply by a thousand. Um, what I have noticed is a little bit of rounding error. Um, it's not particularly liking the rounding sometimes. So um, just be warned of that. So the problem says to round to the nearest integer as needed. So I would round this to 100, right? 99.865 is 100. What I'm what I'm noticing is a couple times some a couple students have sent this to me. Sorry, I was losing track of which window I was in. A couple of students have sent this to me, and it wasn't giving them credit for the correct rounding number. So if that happens, be sure to send it to your instructor, and they can send it to Pearson to fix, or they can just give you credit for it, etc. Or they can tell you, nope, you were doing it wrong. You're too off. But you know, in general, what you're doing is just multiplying your probability times however many samples you're doing, which in this case is a thousand. So I'm taking the thousand and I'm multiplying applying it by the my probability and then I'm rounding to the nearest integer as needed just like they told me to okay and then you have to answer another question which is based on this interpretation but it's also really based on up above look at that probability right do you think that that proves that av avid internet users watch less television in other words Let's think about this. If avid internet users are watching less television, then this probability would be high, right? Let's put it this way. If this is going to be something that's going to be happening, people are going to be watching less television, then we're going to see a low probability, right? And we do not see that. So this is going to be no, right? Our probability is not less than 5%. And I just copied and pasted what they wrote in the in the view and examples. So you can kind of get what they're saying. They're saying, look, if I want to show that 
avid internet users watch less television, right? Then the hours that they watch being, should, being less than 2.20 should be a rare thing, right? And so therefore this probability should be small and it's not, it's actually large, right? So therefore I'm not proving what I wanted to prove, right? There's not sufficient evidence to conclude that avid internet users watch less television, right? I'm not getting that. In other words, just kind of compare the probability, right? With 0 0.05, if it's unusual, you would say yes. And if it's not unusual, you'll say no down here. All right, I hope that helps.